Loops in Power Automate Desktop. You might think that it does not make a whole lot of sense. However, you will use loop a lot in your processes. So listen closely and watch this video. I'll teach you everything. So click a new flow. We can call this loop example. Then we will click create. In a few seconds, our Power Automate Desktop Editor will open like this. We will use the actions in the loop branch here. I'll first create a simple loop without a condition and then we'll create a loop with a condition. So drag in a loop. We can see here that we can choose a start from. We will start from 1, then move up to 5 and increments of 1. The intuition about this loop is that we will run from 1 to 5 with increments of 1. So this loop will run 5 times. And right now, if we click run, nothing will happen because there's nothing in our loop. So it will just be an empty loop. It will run five times, as you can see, and it will stop. Let's try to put something in there. Let's just have a display message. Drag in this display message. Message box title will something be like log message. And then we can say this is loop number. And a smart thing is that this loop store the current index of the loop into a loop index variable. That means if the loop is on the second iteration, then the value of the loop index will be 2. So we can use that here. This is loop number. Then click the function here, choose the loop index, then click save. So we created a simple loop here. We can click run. And what happens now is that we'll have a display message. This is loop number 1. two. 3, 4, and of course 5. So we are now using the built-in loop index variable to display a message. That was the easy loop. You'll use that a lot as well. But now we can delete this selection. And, and look what happened when I delete this loop from up here. You can see that this displays an error. That's because the loop index that we are referring to, that the creation of that is now deleted. Well, that's smart. It's not a... Is not of any importance right now, but now you know. So let's create a more complicated loop. We will create a guessing game. As you might have learned from programming languages when you start to learn them, that's a common use case. So we will ask the user for a number between 1 and 100, and then we will see if it will match our randomly generated number. So the first thing that we will do is to generate a random number. That's it. Drag it in. The minimum, well, let's say 1 and 100. We will store that into a variable called random number. Then click save. Now we will ask the user, pick a number. So find a display input dialog, drag it in. The input dialog title will be guessing game. And now we can say something like pick a number between 1 and 100, like this. Remember that we store the variables here. We store the user input into a text and this random number is stored into a number. So we will just convert this text into a number so we can work with numbers. So in the search action, we'll say convert here, convert text to number. What do we want to convert? We want to convert the user input so we can specify it from here. And we will produce a variable called text as number like this. And we'll click Save. Now what we need to do is that we'll need to create a loop with a condition. So whenever these two, the random number and the text as number, is not equal to each other, then we'll ask the user to try again. If the user will have the right guess, that means that the text as number and the random number will equal each other, then we will stop the loop and display a message. So let's go to Loops. Drag in a loop condition. By the way, if you find this video useful, it will help me extremely much if you can give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have any questions to Power Automate Desktop, leave them below. So, as mentioned, we want to compare the random number to the text as number. So click the function here, random number. You can, of course, also put in the variables yourself, writing it out. It's just much more easy to click the functions here and the text as number. And we want to run the loop whenever these two are not equal to each other. Then we will continuously run the loop. So instead of equal to, we will choose the not equal to and click save. We can now see here that we have a loop again and we can drag our actions in here.
But let's say that these two things are equal to each other, then we will have a display message telling jackpot. We can do we can do that first, so we'll just say display message. That is if it was a correct guess or if it was a correct second guess or third guess. I can just say jackpot. You hit jackpot with your number and then we can display the number so we can just say that the user input here and then we'll click save like this now we will have two ifs in here so drag in an if the first if that is if the guest number is lower than the random number so that is if the text as number is lower than the random number then we'll know that the user guessed too low like this and the other part of the if you see that we created an if here. That will be if we guess too high. That is, that is if the text as number is higher than the random number. So drag in an else if here. So text as number is greater than the random number. So now we created our two ifs. Then we need to just talk about what will be in there. Well, we will just have the same thing as up here, the display input dialog, and we'll convert it. So we can actually copy this, Control c Control v you'll see it here, then we'll drag it down here. So we'll say to the user, your guess was too low, so open this one up. Your guess was too low, and pick a number again, then we'll click save. And now we will need to convert it once more, because this is still the user input, so copy this conversion here. We'll drag it down here, and we can see here that we will still convert this user input to text as number. So now we get the number again. We will do the same thing for the else if, that is just if the user has guessed too high. So I'll copy these two, paste them in, and you can see them that they are here. We'll mark them, drag them down here. But this is where the guess was too high, so we'll just need to change this one here. Your guess was too high. A small improvement here to this workflow, that is, if we could have just used one convert text to number, we could move it in the end of the loop. However, let's not do that. This is a more easy to understand approach. So now our flow is completely done. We'll, we have completed the guessing game. We can start running it. So click run. That's it. We will be asked to pick a number between 1 and 100, so I'll pick 50. My guess was too low, then it will be pick a number between 1 and 100, 75, that was too high. Then we'll know that our number is between 50 and 75, so let's just pick 65. Was too high again, then it will be maybe 60. Now we know that it's between 50 and 60, so 55 maybe. It's between, still high, so it's between 50 and 55, then pick 53, click OK. And we hit jackpot. You hit the jackpot with your number 53. If you want more Power Automate desktop tutorials, click the video to the right to go to the next tutorial or click the video to the left to learn Power Automate flow from the beginning. Thank you.